I don't know about this thing, design is difference. It's, uh, it seems to me this last three days have been more like design is friendship. Uh, I've met some incredible people out here, back there, my fellow speakers. And it seems to me this is what it's all about, you know, this coming together and this sharing just seems to be an absolutely fantastic thing. Now this guy is Guy Alan Fletcher. I'm sure many of you recognize the face and the name. Uh, he was one of the real kind of pillars of graphic design in my country and I think in the kind of greater world of design too. Um, I was very lucky to meet him, become friends with him, and it had a big, big influence on me. He became a real true mentor. And one of the first occasions I ever met him, uh, I took this picture along. And this is a, a road next to where I used to live. And uh, uh, I photographed it because I thought it just seemed crazy. Um, when I took it along to Alan, he just burst out laughter and he said, fuck it, Harry, you've discovered the first ever schizophrenic road. Alan just said to me, look, you just must never, ever stop kind of gathering this stuff. You know, there's some wonderful things in madness and stupidity and nonsense, and quite a lot of stuff of what I'm going to show you as we go along, you could easily call nonsense. But it's got me to places. It's got me to places where I couldn't have creatively got before without kind of following this, this kind of game of stupidity, as you, I guess you could say. So I set myself a little, a little task. I have my one box, one typeface, and two colors. And I tried to make pictures out of words. So once you get your mind in the right place, these are actually really easy. So this is just, just says gone, but not forgotten. This is splitting headache. This is one more river to cross. This is more often than not. It's, it's actually quite a task to try and make them happen, and make them happen and be something. Um, this doesn't take too much to get. It's a vanishing cream. So I've always loved that stuff, and I guess it's, it's inspired by Alan's approach to things, that little subversive twist in things, little games. Always, always adored typography, too. But the simplicity of taking things like with, with type, it's just amazing because you can go so far with so little. You know, it's back to the whole Alan philosophy. And this is a poster I did for a theater uh, production of Macbeth where it's just purely blood. So this is an identity I actually did for an architect. Um, it's up to, upside down for a reason when I was actually designing it for him. And he's, he's an architect who works on ancient buildings. And he does things like he'll actually go and research say, where about in Europe this medieval tree and what it came from? I mean, you'd actually go and find the original wood if it still existed. So what I did when I was doing his identity, I uh, took ages choosing the typeface that it would be, and I turned it upside down to him, and I was explaining to him that, uh, you know, the space between things matter as much, uh, if not more, than the actual objects themselves, the actual typefaces themselves, the characters themselves. And then that's how it finally looked. And he, he just like I bowled over by this, that I actually, you know, could, I thought like that. Um, and a few months ago, I had dinner with him. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm just never stopped thinking about what you did when you showed me my, my letterhead. And he said, I've come up with this thing. And I don't, I'm, he said, I've just, I'm going to try and write a book about it. He says that I think the spaces between buildings are as important, if not more important, than the buildings themselves, because that's where the greater number of us inhabit. So, uh, there isn't such a great divide between topography and buildings. There isn't such a great divide between architecture and graphic design. I, mean, I think we really need to think dimensionally. And what was a real joy on this, and I guess many of you will find this too, is when you find someone who loves what they do as much as doing yourself, when you sit down and design for them, things for them, you can have an amazing kind of little conversation and respect. Back in 1982, when I was still at college, I went to a, a concert in Bath down near where I used to live. Uh, I went to see, well, I went to see a concert of Peter Gabriel, and uh, I couldn't get in. But by some amazing kind of coincidence, I met him in an African uh, art uh, exhibition that was happening to be running at the time. So he'd gone out for a walk in the afternoon before the gig, and I just happened to meet him there, and we got in conversation. A couple of years later, I had a phone call from a lady, a lady who was in The Hague at the time, and she said, Peter Gabriel's um, given me your name. I'm coming through London tomorrow. Can I come and see you? And she said she was from, from the lawyer's Committee for Human Rights in New York and uh, said that they needed a new, new identity and Peter had put me forward to do it and um, so I was very honored and I worked with them. I heard about this idea that Peter had. Um, he had this idea that if Little Brother could turn the cameras back on Big Brother, uh, what an amazing thing that would be. And he met people, he met child soldiers, met women who had been kind of gang raped and all these horrific things and he, he saw it face to face and he realized these people's stories were not getting out to the world. But no one listened. And then this happened. So these are some clips from the piece of film of the Rodney King beating in LA. And I guess we all know what happened there. You know, LA was kind of brought to its knees and everything changed. And suddenly, P 
people were interested in Peter's idea. Reebok put up a million dollars and some other people put money into it. And suddenly this thing called witness that he had dreamt about was born. This is a phrase I think Peter came up with. And I just do graphic things around some of the things he comes up with and others come up with. Um, but the first campaign I worked on with them uh, was for child soldiers. And uh, you know, if you're a graphic designer, you can watch a film, turns you to tears. You can listen to music, that can turn you to tears. You can walk into a building and you'll be affected forever. And I desperately, desperately believe that, that, that um, you know, graphics is a really, really strong medium. And it's an amazing medium, powerful medium. So I did everything I could to pour that into this stuff, to back up what they were doing. About 18 months ago, two years ago, this is a campaign I worked on to raise awareness about villages being burnt in East Timor. The military were going in and they burnt, I think, 3,000 villages and all the people were running into, into Thailand and wherever. So I set light to these wooden characters, and it, so it's not Photoshop, we actually did this, and tried to create something that was iconic that could be used just not on a poster, it could be on web or whatever. And what I didn't realize is five or six months later, when the monks stood up against the, uh, the regime and they were brutally suppressed, I was watching TV and amazingly, out on the streets all over the world, people took my poster. I couldn't believe it. It's, it's probably the most extraordinary thing that's ever happened to anything I've done. It's, it, if I don't do anything else, I think I'm more proud of that than anything. The fact that it actually you know, is taken out on the street. <laughs> anyway, as I said, this is a great privilege to be designing stuff and filling our culture with stuff. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a posted stamp or a fucking cityscape. You know, we are responsible. The, the only thing that stands between us and what comes next is the quality of our thought. You know, we are what we create. So go and do amazing things. You know, get a fire in your belly and do fantastic stuff and change this thing. You know, you know what to do. You know, it's up to you, up to us. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you, folks.